Okay. Thank you. Well, uh, I'm the last thing standing between you guys and lunch, so I'll try to keep this on point and uh, introduce you to the Leaf. So the Leaf is a wearable device, a smart patch that helps uh, the user monitor their own physiology and control their uh, relaxation and also their ability to control kind of their stress response, their sympathetic and parasympathetic stress, stress response. So we actually have a little bit of a video here. So perhaps this is a way to introduce, uh, Hi, introduce you to the Leaf. And I'm Nathaniel, and we are the creators of Leaf. The Leaf is a smart patch that helps you control your natural response to stress. Sometimes, even the subtlest moments can have our body reacting with fight or flight, and we don't even realize that it's happening. Using patent-pending biorhythm technology, the Leaf continuously monitors your heart and breath in real time. When the Leaf notices that you're imbalanced, it uses gentle vibration to guide you back in real time. This product is built on over 20 years of evidence-based research and heart rate variability biofeedback. This simple technique teaches you to reduce your stress response by breathing in tune with your heart's natural rhythm. Our team has completely reimagined this technique for the way that we live life now. The Leaf provides my patients a tool they'll actually use once they leave the office and go out into the world. They simply put it on their chest in the morning and set it and forget it. You, know, you can have this perfect environment when you're at home. When you leave the house, it's kind of like you're going into battle with the world. You have no idea what's going to be coming at you. Bringing in this little device, it's amplifying your body and empowering you to then take action, reset. Biofeedback is basically a superpower that allows you to control things about your body that you thought were totally unconscious. Think about training your bicep at different times to create more muscle. You can train to have more resiliency in your nervous system by doing this throughout the day. Unlike other wearables, the Leaf uses a medical grade heart rate sensor that's over 200 times more accurate than a wrist worn heart rate monitor. We removed the strap and went with stickers so that you don't feel restricted and you forget you're even wearing it. With up to 7 day battery life and continuous HRV monitoring and training, the Leaf is listening to your heart every day and coaching you along. We've actually heard from users that this is like meditation with training wheels. You know, we've gone through many iterations to find the right ergonomic shape, making it flexible, so that when you put it on, it fits any body type. The results have shown positive impact on anxiety, depression, stress, PTSD, chronic pain, optimal performance, sleep, the list goes on. We've gone through many design iterations to give you the game-changing product we have today. We've tested the leaf with everyone from high-powered CEOs to monks living in the Himalayan mountains. And for the last two years, we've been working with Stanford and UCSF clinicians to make a tool that really works. We're really excited. So it's probably, uh, it's probably mostly enough uh, to kind of get started. So uh, that's a teaser on the leaf. As you can see, it's a wearable product that allows you to regulate your own stress response. So the way that it does that is through uh, ECG and biofeedback. Um, a lot of the devices that we're talking about today are monitoring devices, which are great. I think biosensors now proliferated into the uh, consumer marketplace as well as the kind of clinical space. But the key differentiator and sort of the key technology that will allow us to go from monitoring to actually changing behavior, and not only behavior, but mental state and mood, is this feedback loop. And specifically, a tight feedback loop, which is what biofeedback is all about. So biofeedback has been around since uh, the 70s, gosh, right? Um, it gets a little bit of a bad rap, but now with clinical grade sensors and wearable devices, I think biofeedback is on the verge of a resurgence. So biofeedback essentially, for those of you who aren't super familiar with biofeedback, is, uh, is a technique that allows you to learn to control parts of your body that are unconscious simply by gaining instantaneous feedback on those signals. So what does that mean in plain English? As Lee, as Lee mentioned, plain English is always important. Uh, in the 70s, biofeedback started with uh, fingertip uh, temperature monitoring. So uh, a bunch of crazy 70s professors brought in their students uh, to do this experiment. They put a thermometer on their fingertip and they asked half the class to raise the temperature of their fingertip by two degrees Celsius. And they asked the other half of the class to drop it, which is impossible, of course, right? We have no control consciously over our fingertip temperature. However, if you have real-time feedback, if you're monitoring in real time the temperature of the fingertip with high precision, the human brain is actually able to, over time, learn to control this fingertip temperature totally consciously. 
So that amazing, almost superpower, uh, as, as the video mentioned, is, is called biofeedback. So fingertip temperature uh, is something that can be, that, that was the first thing that was really looked at and certainly has, a, as a proof of concept, it's quite interesting, but it's more of a party trick, right? Why do you really need to increase the temperature of your fingertip? Um, that's a little facetious, but there are, there are some applications where you could imagine controlling your body would be very, very advantageous. For example, anxiety. So we've been working with UCSF and Stanford clinicians, specifically with their anxiety patients, to teach them to control their actual heart rate and their heart rate variability um, through a real-time feedback device. So as I mentioned, a lot of devices are monitoring. What we do in terms of the real-time biofeedback is uh, giving people a haptic signature, a complex haptic pattern which we've uh, patented and have worked really hard on um, that allows people to be very aware of the instantaneous changes in their heart rate. So some of you may be familiar with heart rate variability. This is another thing that, our, that the LEAF device does really well. Uh, heart rate variability is essentially this natural variation in your heart rate. Uh, people always assume that your heart rate is kind of constant, a 65 beat per minute uh, you know, straight line. But if that's the case, if you actually notice that your heart is uh, at a constant rate like that, you need to go to the ER immediately. Uh, you're about to have a heart attack. So actually, the natural rhythm of the heart is kind of controlled by two branches of the, of the autonomic nervous system, which are the parasympathetic and the sympathetic um, systems. And so that's, that's not that important, but what it boils down to is essentially when you're very relaxed, your heart rhythm, actually, your heart rate sort of increases and decreases in this beautiful wave pattern uh, that happens when you're very relaxed. And that heart rate variability pattern is what this uh, leaf actually allows you to train on by giving you a real-time haptic or vibrational cue, t teaching you when to breathe out, when to breathe in, and so forth. So uh, enough, about the, enough about biofeedback. So one of the things that we've uh, incorporated into the LEAF, which has helped actually quite a bit, is machine learning. So we're working with some experts in deep learning to tease apart what data is actually in our sensor. So we have the advantage of being an ECG device, so it's highly accurate. You know, this is what's used in the clinical space. We're right next to the heart. Um, we're measuring ECG breath as well as movement and taking all of that data and feeding it into uh, deep learning algorithms. The user app uh, that people are able to use allows them to tag their own emotional states. So you can imagine almost a psychologist in a box emerging from this in the future where our deep learning algorithms are able to, with this high quality data, really know how you're feeling in real time and give you instantaneous feedback through haptics. Why haptics? Why are haptics important? Um, you can't pull out your phone all the time. When we're in the moment, for example, right now, um, while, I'm, while I'm speaking to you, it's a little bit rude and, and possibly uh, a non-starter for me to pull out my phone and say, oh, okay, my heart rate variability is X and I should breathe now. Um, however, I'm feeling my own heartbeat while I'm talking to you all in real time because of this haptic interface. It's a modality that doesn't require you to look at a screen, for example, and you don't need to listen to anything. You're still immersed in your environment around you. And so that's kind of the key uh, haptic engine that we've put into, uh, into the product, and that ties back in with the user app um, such that we can really get fine-grained information about people's emotional state. Uh, we have also made a fundamental innovation in how heart rate variability is done. Um, so part of our haptic engine is actually a way to do real-time biofeedback on some of these stress biomarkers like heart rate variability. So we're actually able through uh, our health metric called downtime to guide people breath by breath in terms of imp improving and increasing their heart rate variability. So this is kind of a, a breakthrough measure that allows you to do stress training and stress reduction uh, training in real time without anyone needing to know you're doing it at very high accuracy and with very good, um, uh, with very good clinical efficacy. So let's see. Uh, I, I'd like to kind of just close out by mentioning that this is a consumer product. What you saw um, earlier in terms of the video was um, a, a teaser for a Kickstarter, which will start in two weeks. So I encourage you all to go to getleaf.com and check check out and sign up to hear about the Kickstarter when it launches. Um, but we've also worked with our cl clinical partners to build a tool that's very helpful in the clinical context as well. Um, so LEAF actually has a clinician portal, and our services are, um, we allow insurance reimbursal through our platform. So we've kind of tied into the actual healthcare infrastructure in a way that's allowing our revenue to sort of make sense at the end of the day, with the goal of empowering as many people as possible to improve their health. So that's a leaf. Thank you guys for listening. We have time for one, maybe two questions. And this gentleman here behind you, Martin, he keeps getting avoided all day on questions. Do you want to step in yep. the center?
A uh, quick question. Uh, how are you finding the response from the insurance agencies uh, or companies with regard to this? You're doing biofeedback, which wouldn't seem to be a, a health requirement for them from an illness perspective. How's their support? That's a great question. So long term, I think the support is great. Um, mental health care as of the Affordable Care Act, which hopefully, we'll, I guess we'll see, is going to be uh, partially enforced for, for years to come. Uh, mental health care is actually now required to be reimbursed uh, on, on parity with physical health. Uh, California has the mental health care parity law as well. So we see a lot of these laws long term moving towards increased reimbursal for psychological services in general. I think the short term answer is we've built in codes that are already being used by psychologists, therapists, and psychiatrists uh, today. Um, and we simply allow that to pass through our system. Um, so we piggyback on top of those codes in addition to using biofeedback codes. So that's kind of how we make the numbers work in the short term. The, there's a gentleman right at the back. And that'll be the last question. Here's it. Okay, sorry. So you said it was a consumer product. Are you also selling into companies to the HR departments and health and wellness departments or just is it just going to be like, come find our product on life.com? That's a great question. Uh, we initially uh, sort of placed this as a purely clinical product. Uh, we've only been publicly launched. We soft launched about 35 days ago. Um, since that time, we've been approached by uh, a lot of consumers and also a lot of companies who want the device. And so right now, we're working with them to figure out exactly how we would structure our, our corporate programs. But I'd love to talk to you more about it. Thank you, Rohan. Thank you. Appreciate it.